Hi, everyone. My name is Joanna Cohen. I'm the director of the Institute for Global Tobacco Control here at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. And I have the distinct honor and pleasure to introduce our speaker today for the, our Innovations in Tobacco Control lecture. Uh, professor Sophia Chan is currently a professor in nursing at the University of Hong Kong, and she's also senior advisor to the university pre president's office. Um, she was appointed undersecretary for food and health to the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region government from 2012 to 2017. And then she was promoted to be the secretary for food and health from 2017 to 2022. Um, and she was um, the first nurse to be appointed to a ministerial position in the Hong Kong government. Um, during her time as secretary, she was fighting the COVID-19 pandemic for over two and a half years. She also um, was uh, leading spearheading efforts and policy initiatives to protect and promote the health of the population through initiatives such as launching the Hong Kong Cancer Strategy in 2019, um, embarking on a new journey in primary health care by developing district health centers in each district of Hong Kong. She developed the first Chinese medicine hospital, opened the first children's hospital, and uh, banned e-cigarettes and heated tobacco products in Hong Kong. Um, before her government appointment, Professor Chen was head of the Department of Nursing Studies and the School of Nursing at Hong Kong University from 2002 to 2011. And she was assistant dean of the Lee Ka Shing Faculty of Medicine of Hong Kong University from 2001 to 2012. And um, she has won Best Teacher Awards. Um, I also just want to note that uh, Professor Chan was the first nurse in Hong Kong to be awarded as a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing. So as you can see, we are so fortunate to um, have the opportunity to hear from uh, Professor Chang Chan. I'm so looking forward to what you have to share with us. And the floor is yours. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Joanna, for your very kind uh, and generous introduction. And good morning, everyone. Um, it's indeed my honor and pleasure to be able to share with you uh, some of the tobacco control policies in Hong Kong and also the challenges and opportunities that I'm facing. Next slide. I want to obviously thank the uh, Johns Hopkins uh, Bloomberg School of Public Health, uh, Joanna, of course, you know, whom I've known for uh, many years now. The di she directs the Institute for Global Tobacco Control. Uh, and, you know, this, this uh, institute is actually, you know, something that we all look forward to in terms of uh, leadership in tobacco control and um, uh, many of the seminars are excellent. Of course, I also want to thank the uh, government uh, of the uh, Hong Kong SAR, of course, the work that uh, they have been doing uh, in tobacco control before I joined government during the time when I joined government, and now I'm back to the university, uh, the, the, the work continues in tobacco control. Next slide. So, um, the, I will be start off by uh, talking a little bit about the global and local situation of tobacco control, uh, the Hong Kong government's uh, tobacco control policies and our strategies, uh, the challenges and opportunities, obviously, and finally, uh, the way forward. Next slide. Uh, we all know that to, uh, smoking kills. Next slide. So if we look at uh, the death risk by risk factors in the world, you can see amongst uh, all the different risk factors, uh, including that we all very, very concerned, obesity, high cholesterol, blood sugar, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, smoking actually only comes uh, second uh, in terms of killing people or in terms of having the risk factor uh, just next to high blood pressure. Next slide. And if we look at the share of deaths uh, attributed to smoking, 
uh, actually, uh, I'm coming from Hong Kong, which is a part of China. And, you know, the, the deaths uh, attributed to smoking, if you look at the very, very dark, uh, you know, reddish color, uh, China is uh, one of the darkest, you know, color. Um, and the smoking prevalence is, uh, you know, obviously different uh, from Hong Kong. So globally, next slide. Uh, globally, um, the World Health Organization have an international uh, framework convention on tobacco control, which was effective in 2005. And, you know, this is a very, very uh, good international law on comprehensive tobacco control measures. Uh, and China also ratified uh, in 2005. And there are, um, you know, nearly uh, 200 uh, parties uh, ratified, uh, countries ratified, uh, or uh, I, I've got 182 here, but this may not be the most uh, updated, uh, which is uh, nearly 90% of the world population. Um, and it is one of the most embraced treaty in the UN history. Next slide. And um, the WHO, you know, at the time of uh, Dr. Margaret Chan, uh, by the way, who is also from Hong Kong, uh, when she was a director general in 2013, she called for the consideration of tobacco end game, that is to reduce smoking prevalence to a very low level, generally at about 5% uh, before a target date set by uh, the respective country or city, and then initiate a total ban, you know, afterwards, you know, on smoking. That is when you reach a certain low point that you can, uh, you have the capacity you know, to, to, to do that. And an example is, uh, you know, this uh, smoke-free uh, Oterra uh, uh, in 2005 in uh, New Zealand, which is uh, aiming to reduce smoking prevalence to 5% by 2025, with um, obviously many of the different strategies that they have uh, highlighted. Next slide. So how about Hong Kong? So Hong Kong uh, enjoyed a, a relatively low smoking prevalence with all our uh, tobacco control uh, policies and also strategies, and also with the effort of not only the government, but all the healthcare professionals, the academia, uh, and also key stakeholders in the community. And basically also the uh, general public in Hong Kong uh, supported this. So we went all the way from, uh, over 23% in 1982 to 9.5%, that is a sing single digit historic low in 2021, uh, which is a major achievement in tobacco control in Hong Kong. Next slide. So um, we have a comprehensive multi-prong uh, tobacco control policies in Hong Kong. So basically there are four major areas. Uh, the first area is of course legislation and enforcement. Second is public publicity and education. Third is taxation. That is we are talking about increase in tobacco tax. And finally providing smoking cessation uh, services you know, to uh, those who need it and in the community. So those are the four major you know, policies, uh, tobacco control policies that Hong Kong have been embarking on, you know, throughout the past uh, 40 years. Of course, progressively, we, uh, you know, uh, turn out all these different uh, smoking cessation or tobacco control policies. Next slide. So the WHO also have the Empower uh, multi-prone, um, you know, policies, uh, monitor monitor, protect, offer, warn, enforce, and also raise. You know, Hong Kong obviously also adopted uh, using a multi-pronged approach uh, on these uh, six uh, areas of uh, as recommended by the um, World Health Org Organization. Next slide. And a sixth strategy championed by the uh, World Health Organization. Those are some of the things that I've listed here, uh, what we have done in Hong Kong. For example, uh, monitor, that is a surveillance. We have different uh, surveys in Hong Kong. Um, health behavior survey, uh, census and statistics, uh, the Metric household survey, uh, the University of Hong Kong. Uh, youth Smoking Survey, and also the Hong Kong University Tobacco Control Policy Survey. So we have done a number of these surveys. Um, and others like uh, Protect, Offer, Warn. For warning, 
uh, we have 85%. We don't have plain packaging just yet, but uh, we have 85% uh, pictorial warning, uh, which is uh, through uh, legislation. And, you know, raise, if we talk about raising tobacco tax, then uh, we are now 64.3% uh, tax of the retail price, but still under the WHO uh, recommendation of 75%. I will go through uh, some of these policies, in particular, the legislation as well as the taxation uh, in my slides coming, uh, coming through. Next slide. So, you know, this is the uh, milestone of the different policies. I, I did not start with uh, 1982, but uh, rather to show you uh, some of the more recent uh, major policies. So if you look at, you know, this slide and the next slide from 2007 to uh, 2022. So there are a few areas that I can describe uh, if you look at all these different policies. One is the expansion of smoke-free areas, you know, in Hong Kong. One of the major policies, we have been doing this sort of like bit by bit, but in 2007, we have a major, major, uh, you know, policy and legislation uh, done that is uh, indoor smoking. Uh, ban. So we ban all the indoor smoking in uh, many different places. The most difficult, of course, is the restaurant. Another area of policy is um, uh, the uh, pictorial warning. So uh, we have in 20, uh, 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 around 2007, we have 50% of our uh, cigarette packets with the uh, pictorial warning. Um, but then, you know, we, we want to expand it. And, you know, that was done uh, later, uh, expanding to um, 85%. Of course, another policy is uh, raising tobacco tax. And you can see at different time points, we raise tobacco tax uh, differently. Uh, but of course, you know, there is no uh, hard and fast science in the raising tobacco tax because that, that is not entirely controlled by the health sector. You know, there is the finance sector, the financial secretary, and there are many other uh, uh, factors that the government would have to consider uh, in uh, in doing that as well. Next slide. So um, another area of work uh, is, of course, the most uh, recent, which is the banning of uh, e-cigarettes and uh, heated tobacco products that uh, uh, I will talk a little bit more, you know, about. And uh, throughout, yes, you can see, you know, from 2015 to 2022, we have, you know, different um, policies on different areas, Victoria warning, expansion of smoke-free areas, uh, and so on and so forth. In the expansion of smoke-free areas after the 2007 indoor ban, uh, we also uh, extended to different outdoor bans. Uh, for example, uh, in a park, uh, in the uh, beaches, uh, and also in the bus stops and bus exchanges. So as I've said, progressively, we do it um, uh, sort of in a progressive manner. And finally, uh, in 2002, uh, when I was uh, in, as, as a Minister of Health, I also announced the single digit smoking prevalence that is 9.5, uh, leading to, um, at the time, I hope it would be, uh, we are in a better position uh, to have uh, tobacco control strategies leading to tobacco end game. Next slide. So um, in the most, uh, the, the, the government is really committed uh, in tobacco control uh, in terms of uh, cutting down the uh, smoking prevalence as well as when we come to a historic new low, we felt that we'll be able to um, uh, attain or uh, at least, you know, going towards the direction of uh, end game. Uh, of course, there is an interim target when we, um, launched the uh, NCD prevention report towards 2025, we set a target of 7.8% uh, by 2025. So we are yet to see, uh, you know, another in another two years, you know, how that will go. Uh, the last year, which is the new term of government, the chief executive uh, policy address have also um, uh, reiterate, you know, this uh, commitment of us uh, lowering smoking prevalence down to 7.8 by 2025. And in, in addition to that, um, the government has just completed, you know, this, this document here uh, called Vibrant, Healthy and Tobacco-Free Hong Kong is a public uh, do a consultation document 
that um, uh, Hong Kong government, the Health Bureau has launched, uh, started in January this year and just completed the end by the end of uh, September. So this is really to set the scene for a comprehensive tobacco control strategy with roadmap and timetable towards endgame, although the government did not use the term endgame. Next slide. So um, obviously, you know, when we uh, have hit a uh, such a historical low uh, in Hong Kong and with a an interim target of 7.8% uh, by 2025, uh, we really, you know, need to put an end to any emerging smoking products. And that's why uh, it is really essential for Hong Kong to uh, ban e-cigarette and also uh, <clears throat> and also heated tobacco products because we simply cannot afford uh, having another generation of smokers uh, coming on. Uh, and uh, at the time, uh, uh, we propose uh, four strategies, which uh, obviously coincide with, uh, you know, this term of government, the, uh, the consultation document, which is uh, reducing public exposure to secondhand smoke, including children. So this is not only to protect or to help the smokers, but also to protect the non-smokers. Uh, we also need to curtail the attractiveness of smoking products. Uh, there are a number of uh, ways to do it. For example, banning flavor in cigarette uh, and also increasing the minimum uh, tobacco sale age. Um, now, currently it is 18 uh, in Hong Kong. And uh, finally, you know, we we need we cannot put all eggs in one basket. We also need to enhance smoking cessation services, which to me, this is controllable. Because when the government have resources and when they want to put in more resources and more extensive smoking cessation uh, services, especially targeting uh, adolescent women and other users, um, this, this would not have the uncertainty uh, that legislation or taxation uh, would give us. Next slide. Okay, so in order to achieve the interim target of 7.8% um, by 2025, or you know later, uh, end game by 5%, there are two strategic directions. One is obviously prevent people, mostly young people, from becoming smokers. So education, prevention, uh, banning, promotion, uh, reducing smoking attractiveness, uh, increasing legal tobacco sale age, et cetera, would be the way forward. But another strategy is really to uh, help people who are currently smoker to stop smoking so that we can um, you know, uh, reduce the smoking prevalence. So uh, obviously training of healthcare professionals, having evidence-based effective smoking cessation methods to help the smokers, uh, providing motivation and incentive. This is particularly important in Hong Kong because we have such a low uh, smoking prevalence. So many people who, have, uh, who wanted to quit, who are very motivated have probably already quit. So remaining are the really hardcore smokers. So it is important for us to think of uh, or put more emphasis on motivation and incentive. Also, uh, easy and free access uh, using uh, mobile, uh, digital health uh, interventions, outreach, uh, both within the hospital as well as the primary uh, healthcare settings are also important, you know, in the Hong Kong context, because we want to reach more people. We cannot open smoking cessation clinics and waiting for people to come out, uh, come into the clinic, but rather we have to do, you know, outreach uh, and, and access people uh, rather, or, or smokers rather. So using a uh, mobile approach and also um, digital approach would be uh, the way forward. Next slide. So let me talk about some of our legislation uh, so that uh, you understand what uh, Hong Kong is uh, embarking on in legislation. Uh, obviously, legislation is very effective because then we can make, you know, everybody, you know, whether they are private people, public uh, sector, you know, would do the same thing. So we have a law in Hong Kong called uh, Caption uh, Cap uh, 371. Uh, which is uh, enacted in 1982 with several amendments subsequently. So this is the major uh, overall tobacco control um, uh, 
uh, policy uh, uh, legislation. So it's called Smoking Public Health uh, Ordinance. So the major part of the legal framework, as I've said, on tobacco control in Hong Kong. So for example, uh, the designated smoking, no smoking areas, a restriction of sales of uh, tobacco products, restriction on tobacco advertising, promotion are all under the remit of this uh, ordinance. Next slide. Um, so, for example, the statutory no smoking areas. So, by law, uh, these places that I've listed here uh, uh, since uh, 2007, these no smoking areas have been extended to all indoor areas as well, in the workplace, in public places, and some of the outdoor places. So, you can see, you know, from here, uh, many of the public places, um, workplace, indoor uh, uh, obviously, uh, outdoor as well, parks, uh, hospital, escalators, markets, uh, the bars, and also the nightclubs, etc. And then we then um, expand to the uh, public transport uh, carriers, schools, universities, bus interchanges, and so on. So, but of course, the most challenging part is the restaurant and the bars and also the nightclubs, that, uh, which we have already gone through uh, in 2007. In it. Next slide. So um, obviously, you know, there is also penalty associated. So there is another law, CAP 600, uh, which uh, is effective since uh, September 2009, where smokers, if they are found to be smoking uh, within in indoor or public transport, then they would have a fixed penalty of $1,500 Hong Kong, which is around 190 uh, US dollars. I'm not sure, you know, how that uh, relate to the penalty uh, in the US, but in Hong Kong, I think this is uh, also pretty heavy. So uh, offenders are required to settle the payment within 21 days. Otherwise, you know, they would be sued or, you know, go into some uh, legal procedures. Next slide. So um, this legislation also embraced, you know, other tobacco control regulations. For example, um, prohibiting tobacco ad uh, in TV, radio, films, uh, internet, uh, printed um, media. Uh, also, they cite uh, hawkers, you know, uh, uh, you know, in Hong Kong. Uh, that is those who are selling newspapers. You know, sometimes uh, the tobacco industry make use of these, uh, you know, hawkers to um, put on uh, some uh, some advertisement, uh, graphic uh, health warning, uh, tobacco sale age, uh, and also prohibiting uh, vending machines. Next slide. Other legislation, um, you know, obviously uh, comes uh, coupled with uh, enforcement. So um, <clears throat> uh, at least, you know, at uh, during the 2007 uh, indoor ban, which is a big deal, uh, for Hong Kong, uh, the um, the pro pro uh, the prohibition of tobacco. Uh, advertisement, prohi prohibition of sale of tobacco products to minors, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We set up a tobacco uh, control and force team uh, whereby uh, they would go to venues, uh, they would check everything and then uh, find people. Uh, and not only during the day, but also nighttime and also public holiday. Next slide. Uh, the legislation and enforcement are uh, not only uh, done by uh, the health uh, department, but uh, there are joint operations within government. For example, in the public markets, which is under uh, the remit of uh, food and environmental hygiene department, the public housing estates under the housing department, and also some uh, le le leisure and uh, cultural venues such as parks uh, and these places uh, are under leisure and uh, cultural services department. So joint operation will be carried out in these uh, circumstances. Next slide. Uh, another legislation is the health warnings. Uh, so in 2015, uh, we expand the pictorial warning from 50% to uh, 85%. So that was when I was the undersecretary. That was uh, not as easy as, as uh, as I have thought, uh, we have more than eight meetings in the Legislative Council, including three deputation uh, meetings uh, inviting the public views. I still remember 
these dep deputation meetings started in the morning and then it go it goes uh, to uh, like 7 p.m. you know in the evening so you know different parties would come and express uh, their views so finally you know after like two years uh, more than two years the bill was passed uh, in 2016 uh, and effective the year after and we have um uh, increase uh, into 12 types of pictorial health warning covering at least 85% of uh, the two largest service of the cigarette uh, packets. We also took the opportunity to include the quit line number and also uh, we talk about quitting smoking for future generations. Next slide. Uh, so these are some of the examples that um, uh, are, some are pretty scary actually. Next slide. Um, so finally, the legislation uh, include uh, extension of statutory no smoking areas. Um, we have done the indoor, but we have expanding. Uh, we are expanding to the outdoor areas to protect the non-smokers. Uh, so this was um, the smoking uh, public health a designation of no smoking areas amendment uh, was uh, was done. Uh, you know, in 2021, but even before every year, we do, you know, progressively uh, some of these. But in 2021, we cover three additional bus exchanges, which are very, very big. So there is uh, many, many buses um, have exchanged at bus stops there. So uh, no smoking signs and layout plans that were put up. Uh, and, uh, you know, so so they have to actually draw. And uh, when you see from this picture, uh, these people are the uh, enforced uh, smoking uh, are the uh, tobacco control uh, enforcement team. Next slide. Um, so banning alternative smoking products, that is uh, e-cigarette as well as um, heated tobacco products. So initially, the government proposed a two-step approach to regulate and then ban uh, in 2018. Um, uh, so the first step is to regulate and then second step to total ban. But then, uh, you know, uh, we emphasize, um, we hear lots of different comments, but we emphasize that the two-step approach does not mean the government is legalizing e-cigarettes and heated tobacco products. Uh, but still, I think uh, the tobacco control advocates in Hong Kong, including Hong Kong Council on Smoking and Health, um, the um, medical sector, education sector, express grave concerns concern if we do not ban it uh, in uh, immediately or you know in one go next slide so you know we have considered you know all the the pros and cons and also the different views and finally the government decide decided to introduce a total ban and announced by the chief executive in her uh, air policy address in october you know 2018 and so uh, we um the bill was introduced in uh, February 2019 to prohibit the import, manufacture, sale, distribution, as well as advertisement of alternative smoking products. Next slide. So, uh, and, you know, some of our considerations are really, uh, we, you know, there are unknown ingredients in an e-cigarette uh, and, you know, these uh, ingredients are, uh, have a known harm worried about the gateway effect that is when the young people if they started smoking e-cigarettes they may eventually turn to smoking cigarettes uh, we also have evidence to show that it is not helpful you know at least in our you know population for smoking cessation and we also very worried about renormalization of tobacco uh, and of course you know the who fctc also have a range of um uh, suggestions or guidelines, including the total ban of ASP. Next slide. So, you know, sorry about this very, very busy slide, but uh, this is really the whole process of uh, legislative process of uh, eventually total banning um, the um, ASPs, that is the uh, uh, alternative uh, smoking products. So as, as you can see, first of all, we want to prohibit e-cigarettes. Later on, we add um, heated tobacco products. You know, these are, you know, the concerns shown by our 
uh, tobacco control advocates, the Hong Kong Council on Smoking and Health. And, you know, finally in 2018, uh, in a policy address, the chief executive announced banning, uh, total ban altogether, and we scrutinized the bill, um, you know, in all these different meetings, uh, very, very difficult um, with all the uh, tobacco uh, industry in interference. But, um, you know, with our concerted effort, the bill was finally passed in 2021, October, and uh, we commenced the bill uh, in 2022, April. Next slide. So uh, obviously, enforcement is also another issue. So the Tobacco and Alcohol Control Office under the Department of Health uh, so has conducted over you know, uh, many, many inspections because, you know, uh, Hong Kong, had, before the law, you know, actually Hong Kong can sell e-cigarettes and also, you know, heated tobacco products. There is no such um, law to guard against or to, to even regulate. So they um, go through, or you know, all the different um, uh, shopping malls uh, to go through these shops uh, uh, after the uh, en enactment of the uh, uh, legislation. So uh, not only the work in the um, uh, uh, in the shopping mall uh, in the Hong Kong territory, but also uh, the Hong Kong Custom and Excise Department also um, uh, import uh, when people bring in e-cigarettes and they are asked to, uh, you know, give it up. And if they do don't, then, you know, they would, you know, summon them uh, to court and then give them fine. Next slide. Um, uh, they have also assigned designated staff to look at, uh, you know, the web because there is also uh, e-purchase uh, or purchasing, you know, online. So uh, while this is a very, very difficult uh, to control, uh, but they also uh, carry out test purchase to investigate into the online sale uh, of the uh, ASPs. So again, you know, from uh, within about a year, more than 670 pages or accounts of social media platforms or local websites were removed. Next slide. So then we come to tobacco tax, another very, very uh, effective uh, strategy. So in the earlier budget um, uh, uh, speech, budget announcement by the financial secretary. So in, in Hong Kong, if we want to increase uh, tobacco tax, it's always under the remit of uh, the financial uh, secretary. Of course, it's proposed by uh, the health uh, bureau. So, uh, but it's announced by the financial secretary. So, you know, this uh, earlier uh, in, uh, uh, we have not had an, an opportunity to increase tobacco tax in uh, about, you know, seven years in ago. So this is uh, last year or this earlier this year is the first time when we can, uh, you know, uh, increase tobacco tax again. Next slide. Um, so uh, tobacco tax is effective. So I showed here for you, uh, the uh, since uh, 1982, uh, Hong Kong has increased tobacco tax at different time points and with different uh, percentage uh, percentages. Uh, obviously, when we have a very high smoking uh, prevalence, we need a, a, a higher you know tobacco tax increase, and, and also uh, the political. Uh, you know, sort of situation as well. So the there are also obviously other policies, but as you can see from uh, 1982 all the way, you know, down to 9.5%. Uh, percent. So we have increased uh, a number of times our tobacco tax, or, although uh, also with other um, uh, health uh, uh, tobacco control policies. Next slide. Uh, this is its effect to uh, the youth. Uh, so we have a youth quit line in Hong Kong U, the university. So we also observed, uh, you know, in 2003 and 2004, when we have about 10% of uh, smoking prevalence among the youth, and now all the way knocked down to, uh, you know, about 1.2%. And uh, so again, you know, there is effectiveness on of, of a tax, a taxation on a youth uh, smoking cessation as well, because obviously, as you can understand, the affordability, you know, of the youth. And uh, you can see, for example, for e-cigarettes, uh, you know, previously we do not uh, have data on e-cigarettes, but then after we have that, um, although there is a slightly decrease, but then it has uh, started to increase. So that's why, again, you know, the ban is uh, very, very important. Next slide. 
So, uh, of course, it is most effective uh, in freezing tobacco tax, but uh, we are still about only about uh, 64 percent of uh, the um, uh, that is about 74 dollars Hong Kong per pack, which is less than uh, which is less than, uh, I think, 10 dollar uh, US uh, and still below the WHO recommendation. So um, Hong, if we look at Hong Kong's tobacco tax, uh, which is uh, 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 below many countries, about 37 countries and uh, 30 countries have introduced an automatic mechanism on raising tobacco tax. And some of the countries increase the tax rate annually in line with the inflation rate. So I think all these are lessons uh, for us to learn and also uh, models for us to uh, uh, take forward. Uh, next slide. Okay, so um, so we also observe the uh, smoking cessation hotline and uh, the effectiveness of increasing tobacco tax and how does it affect our smoking cessation hotlines. So um, we only have data uh, since 2015 to uh, 16, uh, but not the latest round of uh, tax increase. So we can see, uh, you know, the uh, the demand of a smoking cessation hotline has increased with the increase uh, of tobacco tax. Next slide. So, um, so every time when we try to increase tobacco tax, there are uh, obviously um, uh, di uh, different views. You know, some people uh, support, but uh, the tobacco industry and also their allies are obviously object. Uh, and they always say that you know, the public would object. So we actually uh, look at the to our tobacco control policy surveys from 2015 to 2022, which is uh, done annually uh, and funded by the Hong Kong Council on Smoking and Health. So we have eight waves totaling uh, over four, 40,000 uh, people, uh, uh, samples, uh, respondents. Uh, and uh, of, of uh, these of... Uh, uh, 41,000, uh, actually 13,000 are uh, uh, current smokers. So um, over 17,000 respondents um, uh, have a random question on uh, public support on tobacco tax. And there are also current smokers who also answer this question. Next slide. Let, let's look at some of the figures. So if we look at the figures, obviously the current smokers are uh, oh, about one third of the current smokers, uh, 20 to 30 percent, uh, actually also support tobacco tax increase. But of course, for the non-smokers, the ex-smokers, uh, you know, really ma vast majority of them support. And if we look at the total, uh, actually uh, around 80 percent uh, support a tobacco tax increase from the public. Next slide. Okay, so we, we also asked whether, you know, they would quit smoking if we have uh, tobacco tax increased. So uh, with uh, intention of uh, over 50% of them said they will, and uh, or, or half they're smoking their cigarette, uh, about 40% uh, say uh, no intention. Mm -hmm. So um, if we look at the hotline, again, as I've said earlier, over 50% of the tax increase, then, you know, there is also increase in the uh, hotline, uh, you know, calls. And the higher it is, you know, the more calls, you know, they, they were, they, there was. Um, next slide. So in summary, uh, we know that increased tobacco tax is strongly supported by the public and more than half of the smokers will quit or half the smoking due to tobacco tax increase. So if we really want to achieve our interim target, 7.8% uh, uh, by 2025, really, I think a, a large increase in tobacco tax will be the way forward. Next slide. So uh, obviously um, the tobacco control policies in Hong Kong have its challenges and also opportunities. I want to highlight this multi-pronged approach. If we look at legislation and enforcement and taxation, you know, these two always bring us challenges, but they are very effective. So I would say these are uncontrollable policies. But smoking cessation services, uh, publicity and education, you know, they are controllable policies. If we have um, the resources, if we have the commitment, if we have the manpower, the capacity, we can do it. So um, so all these multi-pronged approach, I would say, you know, 
contain controllable policies and uncontrollable policies. Next slide. So the challenges, obviously, are legislation and tax, as I've said. So um, first is not totally under the control of the health sector. Uh, it need to align with the overall government uh, legislative priorities because there are many, many urgent uh, legislative um, um, amendments need to be done in the government. And there is a cap, you know, every year. So every uh, bureau, every ministry will put in their legislative uh, uh, application every year and only so many can be done. So we need to align with the overall uh, government uh, legislative priorities. And because we are doing so well that we have hit a single digit, normally it is not the highest priority in a government. And also it is the highest priority in a health bureau. But if you look at the entire government, everybody, you know, would have their own, you know, legislative priority. Uh, it's also um, the capacity, infrastructure and resources are also very, very uh, dependent upon these uh, things. Uh, a legislative process may take a very long time, especially with the uh, industry interference uh, and opposition by tobacco industry is affiliates and also allied. Next slide. So uh, I just want to just highlight a little bit more about the uh, industry interference. Um, just using, you know, banning e-cigarettes as an example. Um, uh, there are several legislators in the LegCo actually open, openly support the tobacco, you know, industry. And uh, they provide the tobacco industry is very smart of, uh, and they have lots of resources. They provide information packages to legislators and uh, ask them to object the bill and claim that the new product actually is safer better and they can help smoking cessation. They also engage unconventional stakeholders uh, to support their claims, such as the creative art industry, uh, advertising fields, press and media field, young people, think tanks, etc. to object, you know, to the bill. And uh, they also use multiple channels to create an impression that many people thought the government's bill was actually not a good idea. Next slide. So how about opportunities? So there are many, many opportunities and I've highlighted here. Uh, the government policies, obviously with the multi-prong approach with uh, controllable and uncontrollable um, you know, policies. The, our infrastructure resources, uh, our tobacco control advocates support and also the public support, the academic research and also uh, evidence provided for the government and also to advance science. And finally, you know, the government commitment in public consultation, uh, which was launched, you know, uh, earlier and just completed. Uh, and the aim of this public consultation is to have an overall tobacco control um, strategy towards a smoke-free Hong Kong. Next slide. So I want to just very, very quickly go through the public consultation vision um, and mission, which is to reduce cases of disease, death, protect public, safeguard public health, uh, prevent the youth from, from smoking, and also reduce the burden on our healthcare system due to tobacco, which is very, very expensive. So government have highlighted four strategies, namely regulate supply the, and suppress the demand. Ban promotion, reduce attractiveness, expand no smoking areas and mitigate harm, and finally enhance education and also support cessation. Next slide. So I've just highlighted these four strategy, you know, by the government, which the government have also suggested, make some suggestion, you know, for example, regulating supply and suppressing demand. So should we increase tobacco tax? Should we have age restriction? Should we ban possession of uh, alternative uh, smoking products? And should we step up enforcement against illicit cigarettes? So we have some pointers, you know, given by the government, but the government would like to hear uh, from uh, the public, you know, what do they think? Next slide. Um, so I, I wouldn't be able to go through this strategy when I look at the time, but uh, these are all uh, sort of more, more or less outstanding. So uh, Hong Kong has, has done a lot on tobacco control policies, but these are the areas that we have yet you know, to touch on. And these all four strategies would cover uh, all those uh, areas. Next slide. 
Okay, so this is the uh, banning promotion and re reducing attractiveness. Next slide. Um, expanding no smoking areas and uh, protecting uh, the public. So in Hong Kong, as as I've uh, said earlier, we have progressively expanding, you know, the smoke free areas. But then we are thinking uh, at the time, you know, whether you know, we should really uh, not do it in a progressive way, but really big bang, uh, you know, have a, a really uh, 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 ha find f have more areas of uh, no smoking, uh, you know, carve out so that uh, we can we 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 can do it, you know, in one go and in a shorter time frame. Next slide. Um, and enhancing, you know, education and also supporting cessation. One of the things I want to highlight here is the primary healthcare new journey in Hong Kong. So really capitalizing, uh, if we want to do more smoking cessation, now we have uh, in all our 18 districts, uh, all the district health centers. So these are very, very useful outlets uh, uh, for smoking cessation as well. Next slide. So um, the opportunities, uh, if, if we look at the infrastructure and resources given by the government uh, is also very important in tobacco control. So uh, we have a health bureau that is the health ministry of the government. We have the Department of Health, which is under the health ministry, and they have a tobacco control and alcohol control office. Uh, the Department of Health also house the WHO Collaborating Center for Smoking Cessation and Treatment of Tobacco uh, Dependence, uh, which which is uh, serving as a regional hub to support smoking cessation training and program evaluation. And finally, this the Hong Kong Council on Smoking and Health, which is like an NGO, but also 100% of its funding is from the government, is given by the Department of Health. Next slide. Um, so if we need to have you know, good policies uh, being supported by the community, we need all these um, areas. Uh, Mobilizing support if we have any uh, submission by the LegCo uh, bills, uh, policies. Uh, we also need to uh, advocate um, advocate uh, the um, policymakers because many of them also receive packages from uh, the tobacco industry. So we also have to you know work with the LegCo and also Exco members. Enhancing media promotion, public education, our press conference, our media. Uh, sessions, uh, help exhibition, and so on. And finally, of course, very, very important is our evidence, uh, is our research and supporting um, uh, cessation, uh, supporting uh, our, the government's legislation policies, as well as advancing science. Next slide. Uh, so these are just pictures to so, show uh, sub, the uh, support. Next slide. So whenever there is uh, this um, uh, Legislation. So all these um, people with uh, our men, many of them are the uh, advocates. They will uh, be outside, standing outside, doing rally. You know, outside the legislative council. Uh, many of them obviously are our team, our students, uh, doctors, nurses, uh, teachers, and so on. So we also write and to the different media uh, petition. Next slide. Um, so most recently, we did a press conference. Uh, to support the government's uh, tobacco control um, uh, public consultation. So we do that, you know, every now and then, um, you know, many, uh, very, very uh, frequently. And also, you know, at uh, times to garner support and also raise uh, awareness of the public. Next slide. So, um, you know, just uh, only a few slides on uh, our, our research uh, at the University of Hong Kong. So mainly is the randomized control trials on smoking cessation interventions uh, for the patients, for the public, and also for different groups. We also do tobacco control policy uh, surveys to um, support uh, the government and also to evaluate some of its existing policies. Next slide. So I want to very quickly turn to the last slide because I know you know time is uh, running short. But uh, in short, you know we want to have uh, we are working on uh, gathering scientific evidence to support tobacco control uh, policies uh, by, uh, by the government uh, and uh, with different policies. So next slide. So sometimes we are doing you know these uh, policy briefs. Uh, by the Hong Kong Council on Smoking and Health, and we are working very closely with them. Next slide. 
Um, so we also publish, for example, there is this uh, anti-smoking legislation. Uh, so we have different databases and then we run uh, our database to, to really look at the impact of uh, a certain tobacco control policy. Next slide. Uh, you know, we published some of the papers from the tobacco uh, control policy related survey. So all these are related to e-cigarettes. <clears throat> Next slide. And uh, so, you know, going to back to the government, I think the government also uh, rely on many of these uh, evidence, research findings, um, and uh, taking e-cigarettes and also heated tobacco products as an example, you know, that was very, very important because it has taken so long. And, uh, you know, the existing local data, we quote a lot of overseas data, but then, you know, the tobacco uh, uh, industry allies said it is not good enough. So uh, there are many local data uh, that we have actually churned out and um, presented uh, so that, um, you know, the bill was eventually passed with uh, everybody's effort. Fine. Um, next slide. So this is really the final slide. So the way forward, of course, the government is very committed. Um, they have a completed a public consultation. So later on, the idea is to come up with a comprehensive uh, tobacco control strategy. Uh, the interim target is by 2025, 7.8%. Um, so we are also working very, very hard to meet this uh, interim target. And the strategic directions uh, as outlined in the uh, public uh, consultation document are really uh, the backbone or the framework for the uh, comprehensive tobacco control strategy uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, of course, we think it is uh, very important to focus on effective uh, multi-pronged strategy, and that's why the data and the evidence are so important. Uh, personally, I think we should target both controllable as well as the uncontrollable policies because we can never put all eggs in one basket. Uh, strengthening the resources in research in tobacco control, advancing science, supporting to get better co uh, tobacco control policies, uh, is, is very, very important. And finally, capitalizing uh, tobacco control policies with other health policies, such as the primary health care new journey that Hong Kong is now embarking on, is also the way forward. So this is the final slide. I want to thank you uh, all for uh, listening. This is our team. And uh, if you look at this um, lung that is designed by an artist, um, commissioned by the medical faculty of the University of Hong Kong, highlighting our research. So with our research uh, being done uh, successfully, then the lung would be uh, colorful and nice. But if not, then the, the, the lung would change into black and white. So uh, I thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Professor Chen. That was just fantastic. <laughs> and you covered a lot of ground. So thank you. And thank you for your leadership. You're such a champion for tobacco control and and the extended leadership of Hong Kong um, for decades, as you've shown us. Um, and it's so exciting to see um, smoking prevalence in the single digits, and there's plans to uh, keep it moving. So um, we have time for a few questions. And let me start with uh, one, um, and the question um, is about the target of 7.8% for uh, smoking prevalence in Hong Kong. And um, so the question is, is there a particular reason why 7.8% was chosen as the end game target instead of less than 5% that other countries have set and any strategy in place to prevent or eliminate tobacco industry interference? So those are two questions. Let's start with um, the end game target and maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Okay, thank you. So uh, maybe I have not made myself very clear. You know, this is not the end game target. This is just an interim target uh, suggested where, when we have, uh, when we issue uh, in 2018, a uh, NCD prevention report where we have set nine targets in different uh, NCD risk factors and tobacco control or smoking is one of the factors. And we have highlighted this interim target of 7.8 uh, uh, 
by 2025. I think it was at the time a reduction of about 30% of the uh, current uh, smoking uh, prevalence at the time of the report. So uh, this is just an interim target. So the government have not announced a uh, end game plan with the 5%, but this is just uh, what most of the other countries are doing. I'm sure after this a public consultation with a comprehensive strategy, the government may uh, come up with a, a, a percentage, which is probably around 5%. I, I'm not sure, but um, it would be difficult to not uh, come up with a, a target, uh, I think, if you uh, launch a comprehensive tobacco control strategy. So this is uh, yet to come. Uh, and uh, is there any strategy in place to prevent and eliminate uh, tobacco <laughs> industry interference in Hong Kong? So I think we just have to face it and then do our best. And that's why I felt uh, there are there are areas where they can in, uh, uh, interfere, but there are areas that they cannot interfere. So what they can interfere is legislation. So because they can in, interfere, you know, and they can influence the legislators, they can influence uh, their allies. And if we cannot get the law passed, then obviously this is, um, you know, big deal. So we just have to deal with it and, you know, press on and, you know, persevere. But then, as I've said, I also want to uh, put some eggs into the basket of the controllable uh, policies, such as, uh, you know, smoking cessation, uh, training of um the uh, healthcare professionals to do uh, to help in uh, education and help people quit. So I think all these should come together in a multi prong approach so that we uh, we would not be able to uh, interfere, you know, by the tobacco, uh, you know, industry, you know, all round. Uh, and we note the scream test. So whenever we have something and if they scream, that means, you know, those are really effective strategy. So we learn, you know, day by day. Super, thanks so much. And we do have a question from one of our friends from Pakistan um, asking about what Hong Kong is doing or about um, e-cigarette use among young people. And you did talk about the ban. And do you have any um, either data or anecdotal evidence regarding how, how well the ban on e-cigarettes and heated tobacco products is working? Is there how is the implementation on the ground? Are kids still getting their hands on these products? Well, uh, yes, thank you uh, for, for the question. In fact, it is a very good question. While I have uh, in uh, my slide show uh, some of the enforcement uh, data that um, uh, the government have been working very hard in, uh, for example, removing web pages and also doing inspection and putting on summons uh, and charging you know, some of the people. Uh, we, uh, we, we do not have a, a very uh, comprehensive set of data uh, in looking at uh, the effectiveness of the ban, really. Uh, I think uh, as we uh, anecdotal, if we walk on the streets, uh, we see still some people smoking, uh, using, because we, have not, we are not able to ban possession you know, of the uh, e-cigarettes and heated tobacco products. We have banned uh, you know, import, manufacture, distribution, uh, promotion, and also sale. So we believe that with all these five areas of ban, that we were able to, you know, tail it down, you know, one day. Uh, but currently, I know there are people who are still smoking. We we cannot find them as long as they are smoking in areas where it is legal. Uh, right now, uh, but uh, I I don't think this is. Uh, if I go to other other countries, I don't think it is as extensive. Most of the people I I saw smoking in Hong Kong are smoking uh, cigarettes, like um, ordinary uh, cigarettes. Um, but in uh, other places where I you know go to, uh, many of the uh, in for example UK US, uh, you know people are even you know smoking e-cigarettes in restaurants. I saw, so uh, I think. Um, we, I, and I'm sure the government uh, will come up with uh, more data, you know, later on. 
Super, thanks. Um, we have other questions, but unfortunately we're at time. So I think we're gonna have to end it here, but Professor Chen, thank you so much for sharing your um, insights, your experiences. Uh, you, you come from, um, you know, a very unique um, position in all the controllable and uncontrollable uh, multi-pronged approach to, to um, reducing death and disease from tobacco use and, um, you know, having your leadership position in the government and, and now back at the university. So I just want to thank you so much for uh, sharing your insights with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joanna. It's my honor to be able to present in the Institute for Global Tobacco Control. It's really my honor. Thank you.